Last time, we found ourselves exploring Smoo Cave, basking in the beauty of Sango Sands and clambering our way to the Wailing Widow Falls. This episode would see us tackling what is regarded by some as one of the most challenging stretches of road in the UK. Doubling back on ourselves slightly, we were now heading south towards Victoria Falls and our ultimate goal, the Applecross Peninsula. As we made our way towards Torridon, we spotted a picturesque track and decided to stop for an unscheduled ramble in the hope of spotting some wild deer. As with the dolphins at Shannonry Point in our first episode, the deer were proving more than a tad elusive. But this could probably be chalked up to the poor weather. Have you seen any deer yet? No deer. Quite frankly, the weather, I did go out the coat, mainly because the weather's been so weird recently. Uh, there'll be sunshine in five minutes. Uh, not yet, though. Named after Queen Victoria, by all accounts she visited the waterfall in 1887 and was rather taken with the entire area. Victoria Falls was just a short walk from the car park and provided stunning views of Loch Marie, the Caledonian pine woods and the mountains beyond. Stupidly, I'd left the doors open a tad too long whilst getting the dogs in and out of the van. This error in judgement had allowed what seemed like thousands of midges to get into the cab, thus making the next leg of our journey slightly more uncomfortable than it probably should have been. With expectations high, we kept our eyes peeled just in case a deer should suddenly come into view. Unfortunately, the deer didn't seem particularly up for playing ball. There are two main routes into Applecross one being the NC500's most notorious stretch of road, the Black Nabar. We decided to build up to the challenges of the pass by heading in via the slightly longer route, saving the Black Nabar itself for our outward trip the next morning. Up until the 19th century, the only way in or out of the Applecross Peninsula was via boat. We're just having a snack break. Full pies. Then came the Black Nabar, an old cattle pass that through the winter months can still become impassable due to snow and bad weather. Learner drivers and large vehicles are warned not to attempt the pass, and with my limited experience driving Isla, I can honestly say there was slight trepidation about the route. But this would be a problem for another day. So, where are we now? Applecroft. Applecroft. Applecross. 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 And we're eating here later? Yes. We're staying just up there. Just staying up the hill. Another good venue. I know. It's nice. We got settled on the Applecross campsite before making the short walk to the Applecross Inn, a highly regarded establishment located snugly on the seafront. I did my best to ignore the various pictures adorning the walls depicting tomorrow's journey over the pass and focused instead on my crab starter and macaroni cheese. To add to my list of concerns about tomorrow's drive, rain had set in and conditions seemed to be worsening by the minute. That was chef's kiss. On top of all that, poor Colombo was beginning to seem more than a tad fatigued. Colombo, you OK? Colombo today is really tired. It seems like he's had enough. And it reminds me of that time we went to Florida. 
with the roller coasters. Got it hit that day where he just clearly had enough and had a breakdown. I think Columbus going through that but with walking, but not roller coasters. Bye. Very happy with that. It was very Loved good. the apple crossing. It was very nice. Really nice. Staff were really nice, friendly. Food was great. I'm full again. Oh, the leek and potato soup though. I should have just had that for Maine as well. Probably. The walk back to the camper van was brief, and as we turned at the end of the road, we ran into something quite unexpected. So our day has ended with actually seeing a deer. So that's good. With the image of the past still engraved on my mind, the big day had finally arrived. As we made our way towards the pass, it was clear that the weather showed no signs of improving. In fact, it was getting worse. It's a perfect view of the road that is to come. Yep, there it is. Pretty rainy. Uh huh. And foggy. But we're going to do it anyway. Drop. Oh no, I can see the bottom, it's fine. All good so far? All good so far. Um, no problems. What you can't see can't hurt you. What you can't see can't hurt you. <laughs> Passing place. Oh, they're the ones we passed earlier. Okay, here we go, motherfuckers. That's a bend. That's a fucking bend. I think the rain's laying off a bit. Oh, that's good. road down there. It's absolutely fine. I mean, we should probably mention at this point the uh, motor crash we passed at the top we of this. We did just pass a crash, yeah, basically. Before we even started. Yeah. I think we've done it, that's it. That's it, is it? Oh. Oh no. 
No, hold on. Okay. Um, We've got a nice big place here. Still okay. Droppy but pretty. Droppy but pretty. problem at all. So is it the scariest road you've ever driven? No, not at all. What's the scariest road you've ever driven? I don't know. There's something scarier than that? There's bound to have been. Oh, that was fine. Um, yeah, you could feel, I mean, it was funny at the top, you could feel everyone had stopped at the top and kind of were giving it second thoughts. Well, to be fair, we haven't really picked the best weather. Well, not, not the best weather. There's islands out there, you probably can't see them on this video, but not the best weather but um, I mean it did make things easy because we didn't have anything coming the other way apart from that one car um, but yeah I think that was fine would recommend you wait we're going to get around the next corner and realise we haven't <laughs> hit the worst bit yet aren't we well done honey I wouldn't have had anybody else drive me down that that's alright I am the Vin Diesel of camper vans In reflection, I'm a little bit annoyed that I didn't come up with a Van Diesel pun at the time, but there you go. I'd love to say our interest in Aileen Donnan was historical, but unsurprisingly, and not for the last time on this trip, it was our love of film locations that had brought us to the gates of this restored 13th century castle. This was the home of Connor MacLeod of the Clan MacLeod in the original Highlander. Breaking from the NC500's normal route, we were now heading south for Balakulish instead of closing the loop and returning to Inverness.
We'd visited the Clegagian several times during our last trip to Scotland, and a return visit to this beautiful pub seemed in order. So we've been here before, and obviously you wanted Potato leek and potato soup, but you've been struck with bad news. It's not soup of the day. It's not soup of the day. Your eyes look amazing in this Thank light. You. Amazing. Thank you. So what soup is it? Onion. Will that do? I mean, it sounds nice. It sounds I nice. Look at the menu. Mm, I would. As consolation for the lack of leek and potato soup, we skip straight to dessert. Yeah, yeah. You skip straight to dessert. That's fair enough, I suppose. How was your soup? It was good. Good, yeah. How has your day been? Okay. The driving bit was easy. But you quite rightly said, I'm an exceptional driver, so it's not for everyone. You're such an ass. <laughs> uh, I think if you've done the red, rest of the NC500, that's not going to pose any real difficulty for you. Um, and going to the Highlander Castle, which I'm belittling by calling it the Highlander Castle, uh, was great, really good. Very cheap just to walk around the outside, I thought. Mm. It was only like three quid, wasn't it? Three fifty. Yeah. Um, Made up for the overpriced shortbread that I bought in the gift shop. We did buy overpriced shortbread, yeah. Which you know, but you've got to. You're in Scotland. It's uh, the Scotch thing to do. <laughs> um, and uh, then the drive here, and again, you get to Glencoe, and you look at the mountains, and as I just said, it's um, everything's suddenly in 4K, and all the mountains you've seen on the NC500, they are all great. There's something very 4K about the mountains at Glencoe, does that make sense? Glencoe's my favourite place in Scotland, I think. And the bar, the bar was good, I mean, you know. But yeah, good day, we've done more today, even though we travelled for three and a half hours, we did more today than we thought we were going to, so, yeah, good. <laughs>